again. Yeah, I, I have a hunch that it might be a third map. I think the F is gonna win this one. All right, or, I guess we're starting. Or uh, Renraku might actually like fight back to take the map under their hands. If it's gonna happen, it's probably gonna be a little bit tight. Rise might fall into Renraku's hands. It's pretty default. It's their most trained map, I think. And Snowfall. Snowfall would probably be F's favor. Because they oh. played a map with us a lot. Speaking of recons, three recons on the F side. One recon on Renraku's side. Lizard being a recon. This is gonna be wild. Because it's an early pick in the basement, picking off Rusher. Ghost Lizard just to the bank, and if you majestic, it's Blizzard to the, van, to the uh, glass. Well, the main recon for Renrock is out of commission, so we still have two more recons that Renrock will have to go up against. Jungle is sitting in a position up on the threat plate. It's a very good first position to play, especially with the SRM. That threat plate is a little bit of a fickle beast, meaning that if Renrock is not too aware to how it works, they're gonna run into some trouble here. It looks like Porpoise is taking camping uh, at the white vent over near the entrance to uh, Hangar, but now he's going back in and probably to regroup his team. Renraku is playing a very defensive here around, the, or well, close enough to the ghost, I guess, which is at the elevator. Just trying to gauge their situation. That looks like we're getting Porpoise doing some calls here. Oh, and now Renraku is opting to falling back even further into the parking lot. This is what I mean. Like, I'm pretty sure they realize that the F has played this map and just invested in this map more than them. So they're just going to try to play it defensive based on where they spawn. I don't even, I don't even think they went much further in the parking lot. I think they just went into the warehouse and that's as far as they got. Or the basement. <laughs> Clock is ticking slowly, they're slowly probing out into the parking lot. I don't think we're gonna see a round conclusion here, especially with Dominic. Okay, never mind. Oh, it looks like they're starting to push in now. The moment I was gonna say with Dominic even letting that one recon jump around, the moment that happened, everybody just opened fire for like a minute. But it looks like this round is gonna come to a close with no point given. Yeah. I would have been very surprised if we're going to actually boil down to having a conclusion in this round, considering that Renraku didn't even bother to try and get aggression in. They let DF completely have the warehouse, take over the basement, they held their own position towards long, like a glass office and stuff on the blue hallway downstairs, and that's it. <laughs> Not much else. It looks like we got the same composition on both teams again from last round. So, uh, seeing that one recon was taken away on the F side, maybe spawn related, or just because they realized that three might be a bit overkill, they're already seizing a lot of control. We got Milk going to the basement with Purpoise. Jungle trying to push his way forward towards gas. And it just doesn't seem to work out. Once again, Renraku more defensive. Lizard probably trying for the third time to somehow get on the containers, falling down three times now managing to get to the other side, to the vents, in the most obscure and convoluted pattern ever. DF is starting to claw with the ghost, and it seems like Zippy took advantage of that, along with Milk. Lizard Looks trying like... to be the wildcard from the vents here didn't work out, as Milk was just in the basement. Majestic follows up, and they instantly seal the first round, one after another, taking people from the choke points. It was kind of weird seeing Lizard climbing on the gas station roof to jump on the fence to get to the rooftop uh, to swap to truck and get into the vents. I mean, he's a recon. He could have just backed off and go to the truck. So that was a little bit confusing to see. But That being said, I think he had enough of that, swapping completely to the opposite, playing support, meaning that their recon is down and out, leaving Majestic and Jungle as the only recons on the map. 
Interestingly enough, the recons are completely seizing control of the basement going to the elevator. So that's going to be a little bit of an interesting play here. Nobody realizes it yet. Lego Racers neglecting the elevator, facing his back towards it. If timed right, they could get an amazing drop and cause a lot of chaos in that warehouse. You might be able to hear the elevator go down though. And it seems like Lego Racer is going to try and toss a frag into the elevator. Gets no one, but now they know that the Noah's elevator is trying to get uh, taken advantage of. Hmm. Once again, Renraku just holding Spark. They're lo looking through the window, another person leaning around the corner. Um, they're holding warehouse, they're not really moving anywhere, they're just waiting. They're waiting for DF to do what is expected from them, trying to play it faster and a little bit swift. And uh, I think that it can work, but it might be a bit of a mistake, considering that DF has two ways of playing. Uh, Brusher drops Majestic and Spark, and it looks like there's two other people trying to go push the Spark. DF, DF has this weird balance of playing sometimes really fast, and sometimes they just decide to go more defensive. So just trying to rely on your defenses might be a problem here, as Sippy actually gets the drop on two people by flanking. Now we're three, three to one. Lego Racer gets the drop on Milk. Now it's jumped to uh, Zippy and Jungle to pass on Lego Racer. Yeah, I, seen... I feel like it's a bit of a, a shame of how um, the defensive situations were held. Because, I, I mean, it's okay to seize control of the warehouse. It's okay to seize control of the basement and hold off, knowing that the F has a pretty high speed in some occasions. But just spending the, the entire round in a warehouse looking in very strict directions with Zippy allowing, for example, Domino to be, com be caught from the side uh, makes for think situations like these where everybody just holds their lane and holds their position and the moment it starts coming apart, they're, they're all like split up. And then like Zippy, like Zippy coming in from the side, he picks one person. No side light to Zippy. You can't come into the warehouse and pick a second person before he goes down. Um, and just like Josh Domler, speaking of, um, it looks like uh, Renraku com went completely assault this round. Uh, Ghost Lizard dropping support in favor for assault, which does not seem to work out for him, with Zippy dropping him. I mean, I like the idea now because he was fast enough to get a trade, and trades are exactly what you want uh, if you play a defensive position. But that was the only trade that went over the board. And I think DF is starting to realize that uh, Renraku is just holding rather than trying to like seize control of a lot of positions. Pushing in with more aggression to reach these people that are like split into their teams to catch that off guard. At least it seems that way. Now it looks like Raku is rolling a recon and a support with three assaults, while DF just seems to be doing the same team composition. Well, it seems like Lizard has the right idea trying to go for the vent, but is encountering Majestic who actually gets to pull out the milk though and turn it out here. It does seem like Renraku is trying to get a little bit more aggressive here, at least their positions are further forward a little bit more in in like in the center of the attention trying to play against what they're currently known for in this round just on their positions it looks like zippy's trying to go for the cap here he sure can try but he also will have the intel of Dahmer and uh starbuck and akoma being at the position trying to like, prevent that of course starbuck smokes off the uh, t-junction Gets the drop on Domler. Zippy, Zippy does. really out there in this match. As a merc, he's putting in so much work. Yeah, it seems like. Almost a lieutenant with how strong he's going in. It seems like uh, last match was a warm up for him. Definitely was. I mean, he has only one death on the board. He has the least death and the most points out of everyone on the server. It's almost as if. Um, 
dying, wow, well, it feels like it was a bad idea. <laughs> because Sippy is putting out a lot of work here. That being said, Renrock was not down and out yet so far, considering this is DF's pick, I'm not surprised. I, I kind of hope that Renrock would put in a little bit more steam to keep it tighter, because I know that they can play, to, play adaptive, they can figure out a situation, try to like play against what they're seeing, but that slipping away aspect, trying to like slip it away from DF so far is not really happening. <laughs> Alright. Domler and Lizard are just very good time of here. Trying to, you know, trying to swap up the tempo a bit, being offensive. And it seems to work out, just finally like breaking away from the shell, getting out there, really got them a good start. Purpose is not having it though. Really, really strong defense in the warehouse, trying to like catch three people. It looks like when we're about to see the first uh, point for Renraku, and we do. Here we go. Now that's what I'm talking about. If if you realize that you play positions and they realize, hey, we can just push on these positions and overwhelm them and it's working, you need to swap it up. You need to swap readability to to the unexpected. And that has come. The push was really good. It doesn't seem to have much enough of, of an effect on the recon situations though. I mean, Zippy has swapped to becoming a recon, but I kind of assumed that, you know, after a push like this, no recon would be on the board. Put it up a bit. It seems like Zippy has frozen in place, and the funniest part is whoever shot Zippy stopped firing either at a confusion or just thinking he got away. And now Zippy's just on the elevator between everything, kind of like probably a little bit confused. It seems like Ghost Losers are starting to make calls. Uh, Milk drops Rusher in the basement and Milk's trying to go for the Beacon Spark. Yeah, this definitely can be... Oh. That could have nearly gone south with Lizard just like looking away for a moment into the glass office. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm uh, honestly surprised if he survived that long. Like Lucifer gets the last frag of the round, netting another point for Raku. Well, they're they're getting potential. They're pushing the choke points a little bit to where the choke points are more expected to be and countering the aggression with a little bit of a, some force of their own. And it seems to be working out in their favor, slowly pushing back into evening out the playing field. They even got a sergeant on the board now, and that's exactly what they need. It seems like their uh, current composition of two supports, one recon and two assault, seems to be doing well for them. For these past two rounds, they've got the uh, win for with that composition. Oh my lord, <laughs> Sippy just looking away, just calmly reloading his weapon, and even after the first shotgun shell, Rusher just seems unaffected and keeps firing. Sippy didn't even bother turning around, jumping away, or anything of the likes. Well, Majestic is starting to try to push for an even playing field here and like turn in their favor, but Rusher and Domler are not having this. I'm in a really good position here, just trying to catch people off guard when I try to push out. But Majestic is not even deciding to go out in jungle, it is also just very keen on holding the basement for now. Well, we're back to just what we were at the start. We got Ren Rocco just holding their position now, they got the kills, they don't really want to be too aggressive compared to DF, which is probing forward, just trying to figure out where the people are, can't find them, and just not commit. Dahmer is the only person that is a bit forward, a bit further forward, getting the drop on jungle here, but 
I think Majestic at this point just realizes, hey, uh, I'll stop searching and just hold a point and hope it works. Even now, it's a 3v1, and Renrock is just deciding to slowly inch forward towards the warehouse. They can't afford to tie. They're currently not in the favor of the ties. They're three versus one. They really should just like figure out to get the drop on Majestic somehow and kill him. Majestic drops Dommler in warehouse, and it looks like someone's flanking around an elevator. Well, the attempt is here. Uh, Majestic really good on the, on the game sense here, tossing a nade, almost pre-nading it in there. And now it's down to Starbuck and a Coma, Coma, which has actually pushed into the warehouse. And Majestic, so close to seeing him, could get the drop on him just in the last three seconds if he just like commits, but he doesn't. And so we tie. They both had 100 health, but Mocha was in a... Uh with the armor advantage being a support. Well, if Majestic has proven one thing, it means that he can also um, just hold his position rather than just being on the aggression all the time. And Domler has proven that he can be very cheeky with how he positions himself, for sure. Okay, everybody's starting to slowly manifest on Renoraku's side into the warehouse. Meanwhile, the F is a little bit cheeky with the vent assault play here. Sippy in a warehouse facing the strong opposition that's about to wail in. Milk is trying to get into a position to take on the warehouse. Elevator is pushed down so he has a chance of actually fighting in it, and so he does. Ghost Lizard is trying to make calls into people in the vent, which seems to be just starting to take advantage of that. Yeah, it seems, it seems like the vent play is pretty strong, a recon leading the game here. Majestic coming in on the glass office to get a drop on Rusher and it works out. Little does he know that there's a second person to try to follow up with the trade, but little does Starbuck and Akoma know that Jungle is there to follow up with the trade as well. Mm, Porpoise gets caught on the shelf, which is unfortunate for the flank that Ghost made. The Lizard is not having these trades. He's definitely not wanting to have it, so the warehouse is now under his possession. But he has a recon to face. One of the slippiest, slippiest, slipperiest, oh Jesus, uh, recons that I know. I'm trying my best, I swear. Same, same. Well, jungle gets lizard, and it's now down to Lego Racer trying to answer that call here. He even saw it for a brief second, but so did jungle. And. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if dropping into the elevator right there was on purpose, or if he just happened to land there, but it seemed to have just worked out. Pretty interesting, uh... Pretty interesting, um, uh, round for sure. When Rocco did a really good comeback there, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, it seems like, uh, DF is knows uh, jungle is a pretty good recon, so they uh, trade him their MX, which is a pretty good play to dump to uh, dish out more damage in a shorter period of time with a uh, with the recon's agility. Sure, and the jungle is about to get the drop on either Dommler or uh, someone else here because he literally jumped past of the doorway that Dommler is sitting in. Yep, sure enough, he uh, gets a shot off, and the weird thing is Dommler went back. And he realized he's been shot at, so he's going back to check, but he doesn't know from where. And while he was checking, going back into the basement, Jungle's already somewhere else, taking out two people. Jungle is scary to play against, and I've played against him a week, like a week and a half ago. And sure enough, one name after a number, uh, one way, uh, one... Uh, words. One body after another is piling up on Jungle's head. Whoever said that I don't shuffle with words and I don't do trip-ups, I think this is a prime example that even I have my moments, and I'm sorry about that. That being said, Jungle now has four kills under his name in just a single round. 
what a stir. One round away here, one win, meaning that PF already takes the first map. Renraku has to step up here and make it count. Try to come back. So it looks like Renraku is now doing an all assault push. All of them, all but one wielding an MX variant, while Rusher is supportive of the uh, Super 7. A shotgun pocket can work, but uh, my my policy with shotguns is always to have a backup because the shotgun's firing rate is just not that great. Ooh. Dommler looking away at the worst times if he's just jumping around the corner to maul him. But here's, here's what I said, the Super 7 as a backup instantly takes out Zippy, even at this long range. Yeah, the Super 7 can either be a flat cannon or a pop gun at times, and it can't shoot through uh, most penetrative services. Yeah, the glass in the, uh, the green part of the basement definitely is a problem. For a Super MK-12, uh, A13. I did say the license name, that was a hiccup. That being said, Renrock was like trying to seize control here of the basement. Uh, jungle in a very interesting position because he is sitting above the vent that leads to Spark. And if he goes at the right time, which he does, he can get catch Starbuck here. Rusher is aware of his position now, but he looks away again for a brief amount of time, risking it. Now it's just up to Liga Racer of 20 health to. Uh take care of both jungle and porpoise jungle once again just slipping by getting around he has not taken a single point of damage just like last round well we are back in the fashion of just holding a choke point for a certain amount of time not really getting too much out of your shell the ghost pickup a very wise reaction to it. Now it's just a 1v1 against uh, Jungle and Lego Racer. Yeah, but Lego Racer probably is not really too keen on trying to win the round here. No, it looks like he's trying to bang through the uh, the grate in the floor, but he just barely manages to do some damage to Jungle. Well, it was just in time for the tie. And I think Renrock was pretty happy about that it happened the way it did, considering that Jungle once again after being shot through the griddle, has not taken a single point of damage in that interaction. Uh, I do take back, back my statement. It did look like LEGO Racer in the end tried to cap out the round and uh, get the win for them. Because originally he held back a little bit, but then pushed into the warehouse. So maybe he wasn't playing as defensive as I thought. Now it looks like Renraka is doing a uh, ghost push here, with Dommler doing the calls. Hmm. Well, it seems like Renraka is trying to like stick together the unit. The app is pretty loose with their gameplay. They got two in a warehouse, one person in the basement. They're not really in positions where they're close to each other. Just trying to use their speed and exotic positions, if we take a look at jungle, to uh, get the win here. But, but if I'm gonna follow it up, it makes a lot of sense. Dollar has to call out very, very spread out positions. Here too. Jungle picking him off here. Lego Racer following up by trading milk. Uh, pretty tall price to pay here. Majestic's almost also did. It seems like a risky pushes here on being or being made. Oh my lord. Um, Purple is just trying to take the fight here and it gets down. You just see jungle jump over the concrete wall here for the rescue, dropping on top of the two. He is going absolutely beast mode here. 30 points on his name. DF1's first map. 7 to 2.